<laughs> yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty, um, definitely the best that I've done with this character. Um, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Yep, that's exactly right. <laughs> Aracocra. <laughs> Yep, I am the life cleric. Uh, I literally refused to go on uh, part of the quest where we had to go underground. I just hung out at the quarry instead and uh, drank some hipster coffee. I remember that. Yep, I remember that. Yeah. You know, there's like doors and windows, you know, but like an underground cave, no. No. A god would have to talk to me. Yeah. up to this point well, that's okay okay now you should be able to hear me in the stream I don't think you've been able to hear me up until this point and if that is the case then I'm really sorry about that guys <laughs> Uh, but just us I made the adjustment. Friends. Yeah, I made the adjustment now. So yeah, so we'll, we'll yeah, let's just go through that again since they, since they've only heard your answer. Well, I'm I guess they've heard enough really, uh, if they've heard your side of it. So, uh, so anyway, we'll we'll go ahead and get things going with a summary of what has happened up until this point. And we have an adventure log that we were maintaining. Uh, that you're able to see here. Oh my God. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a lot. You're only like seven days into this, but there's quite a lot that you had done. Uh, we'll go through this as quickly as possible. Um, uh, day one, you show up in Red Larch. Uh, you discover that there's been this delegation of people that have been coming from a near uh, city nearby with uh, the body of a deceased knight that uh, we're supposed to deliver him safe to a nearby community. And they're, they're called the Mirabar delegation and they have all been lost in action. So you decided you were gonna head out and investigate, starting with uh, this place that's called Scarlet Moon Hall that is in some hills that are, are near this city called Red Large. So you go to Scarlet Moon Hall and uh, at Scarlet Moon Hall, you discover that there is some kind of really disturbing Burning Man Festival type of event that's going <laughs> on there. Uh, that turns out the whole event is being run by a group of nefarious cultists. And um, bad things go to worse. Uh, you end up starting a couple of fires. Uh, the whole thing burns down and the entire camp goes into panic. Uh, uh, but you're pretty sure you also found that you're pretty sure some bad guys got hurt in the process of maybe some other innocents uh, getting driven off. And in we all invented of that. the fire festival. 
Yeah, it was a really interesting fire. Oh my fire. gosh, do we did go to the fire festival. You went? You went? <laughs> yeah, so since then, there has been an actual fire festival that went maybe better than the one that you went to by the time it was all over with. Maybe. Uh, so then following that, uh, you uh, see, uh, you, you found a cave actually underneath Scarlet Moon Hall. There were some hellhounds in the cave, but you were forced to retreat because they seemed to be a little bit above your uh, your your uh, level at that particular point in time. So then uh, you take a rest. You go back to Red Larch. You discover some farmers have been kidnapped. Uh, you when you go to the scene of the kidnapping you find some evidence that people had come from another location in the hills that's called Feathergale Spire. So you go to Feathergale Spire and uh, you discover another cult, this time not a fire cult, but an air cult that's in Fe Feathergale Spire. You get to the top, you battle the person that seems to be the leader of the cult. There, mm -hmm. manage to defeat him and some knights that attack you from the air. Uh, causing the rest of that particular cult to flee in panic. Um, you actually uh, discover now down in a valley below that the next day that there is yet there is a cave that leads yet to another area uh, where you find some kind of a minstrel and band for some nefarious deeds that are going on underneath the area where that cult was situated. But then you decided that uh, there was this person there that was named Arisi. She seemed like she was uh, pretty much a badass, and you weren't quite sure you were ready to face her. So you headed back out and ran across a mercenary on one of the roads that gave you a clue to yet another location uh, where you found yet another wave, this time not an error, not a water, not a fire, but uh, I'm sorry, not an air uh, or a fire, but a water cult. And uh, there was a lot of mayhem involved in all of that, some of which has taken place uh, off screen, so to speak. Uh, you lost a couple of companions. They went missing during the scrum, but you did manage to root out eventually the, um, the water cult as well. And now, having put two and two together, uh, you have decided that probably somewhere in the area, you're also going to find, guess what? Anybody want to guess at what you think you might have found? <laughs> Here's a hint. It's another cult. Oh. Oh, how nice. Oh. And uh, we've covered water and fire, and we've covered air. So, Is that earth? Or? Yeah, you've you've managed <laughs> to you've managed to find wh what is masquerading at least as a group of monks in a place called the Sacred Stone Monastery. Supposedly, it's just a group of reclusive monks who like to hang out and uh, make wine that gets sold in some of the local communities. <laughs> but um, y y y you guys have been smart enough kind of during the intermission between games to figure out this is probably, we're probably going to find another one of these cults that's causing trouble uh, somewhere in the Sacred Stone Monastery. So, um, you have made your way, and we'll go, I'm going to go ahead and move y'all over to a map so that you can kind of see. You have made your way uh, on this map over to about this location right here. And where they're supposedly located, which is kind of interesting because um, there's kind of a relationship between, you can see River Guard Keep, where the water cult was, and you can see Feathergale Spire, where the air cult was, and you can see Scarlet Moon Hall, where the fire cult was. And sure enough,
if the Sacred Stone Monastery doesn't show up um, at exactly this location that you're looking at right now. All of them just kind of all within a very close range of each other inside these particular hills. How convenient. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what a strange, what a strange coincidence. So now it, you, you shouldn't on this map, you shouldn't be able to see anything yet. No. Is that right? No, okay. So, things. all right. So I'm going to put out, uh, sugar cane and kark and glory all right now can y'all see anything uh no. no all right so let me give some sight to your tokens because i haven't done that yet so becca you should be able to see now is that right Yes, I can see. I can see a little bit. All right. And Kark should be able to see now. Yep. And Glory should be able to see now. Yes. Are we all good? Yep, all good. All right. And so this has a new feature to Roll20 that we didn't use before that's available now. Um, and the feature... And it is called one thing is called dynamic lighting, but the other thing is called advanced fog of war. What mm -hmm. should happen as your tokens move around is you should be able to see more and and more of the area. It reveals kind of like a real time strategy game would. Um, okay. As as you you'll there's, you'll still have the areas that are outside of your line of sight where you won't be able to see, but cool. okay. you should be able to see things within your line of sight. Okay, so here's where we're at. Um, you all have made your way to uh, this monastery. It's kind of set down in a canyon, and uh, uh, you actually get to a point where you could touch either side, reach out with your hands and touch either side. That's how narrow the space is in this canyon that leads into it. Okay. And you come up on the... the, the um, the monastery it's kind of the middle of the afternoon about right now uh, there's nobody outside the doors are all closed there's very very narrow windows uh, that you can see and there's a path that seems to lead around the outside of the monastery uh, but there's not a soul in sight mm -hmm. All you can just hear is the whistling of the wind uh, kind of as it moves through the canyon and uh, this just complete quiet where you are right now. You're, you're just kind of standing at the steps of the monastery right now. I whistle back. You whistle back. <laughs> That's my imitation of the wind. It's blowing. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Um, okay. If I sneak up to one of those narrow windows, will they be able to see me? Uh, if there was someone in there, it's possible they can see you already. If somebody was looking out the window, but they're very, very narrow. But, but it's possible somebody could see you kind of peeking in. You might draw somebody's attention more than you would if you were just standing there. Okay, is there a way that I can do it stealthily? Can I do a stealth check? Yeah, you can do a stealth check to just try to take a quick glance, maybe from the side or something like that. Okay, I just want to get... Can I help her by making stealth sound effects? Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> there that. you go. Not oh, that's not helpful. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, 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 pick the screen. Pick the screen. Uh, the the window that you wanna that you wanna peek um, into. We'll we'll, uh, we'll peek into this one. Okay. All right. Wow. So you you do have to climb up the wall a little bit because there's stairs that lead up into it. But okay. as a monk, you don't have any difficulty with that. Okay. Um. So uh, go ahead and move your token to whichever window you want to go look inside. 
Ooh. Having trouble moving it. Hold on. Yeah, there's a bit of a. Uh, there's quite a bit of lag when we when you move your character. That's weird. Didn't used to be like that. Yeah. Well, so like. Okay, there we go. Dynamic. Right. So, um, you 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 uh, go ahead and make a stealth check. Okay. Ooh, yeah. So, um, so it, it, you're just almost spotted, but fortunately, you're not. You can make out a couple of figures that are just inside the door. They're wearing these weird looking tin masks. You can actually see one of them. Uh, you've got that in your line of sight right now. Um, they're wearing these tin masks and um, they're not really saying anything. It, it actually, it's actually kind of a creepy effect. Uh, there, there's just tiny little eye holes in them and uh, give you some idea about what you're looking at. Let me show you right here. Oof. And uh, there's a couple of these guys that are standing there inside this uh, area. Okay. And you're just almost spotted. You just ducked back in time. All right. Well, I will convey that to my my two dear friends behind me. Hmm. They're probably friendly. What do you mean they have ten masks? Ten masks. Ten masks each? <laughs> That's almost 30 masks. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. We're, when we're talking about ten masks... T-I-N. <laughs> That's what we're talking. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, well, what if someone, like... Maybe Sugarcane, since she looks the least threatening of all of us. What if you just knock on the door and we just see what happens? There only seems to be two in there. Okay. I mean, my stealth is trash, so it seems well, like... Well, you're not trying to be stealthy. You just want to knock on the door and, I don't know, look non-threatening. <laughs> and see what their reaction is. Does anybody have any wine? We can start a conversation about that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Book club. Book club. <laughs> I just knock with like a copy of I don't know some like scribblings yes, I've done like I wrote a book excuse uh, me but have you heard the good news about our lord and savior the earth demon <laughs> should I do that I shouldn't be giving you ideas yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> okay sure I'll, I'll walk up to the door and uh and talk to them. Okay, okay so, so we're gonna we're gonna walk up to the door and we're gonna talk to them. Yeah, I'm gonna knock, just like like a dun 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 like that kind <laughs> okay, of. Okay, we're really gonna do the shave and a haircut knock here. Yeah. Okay. Are there any others? Can I make a charisma check on there, on? there is no other knock, knock besides the shave and a haircut knock. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> You can make a charisma check on the knock, yes. <laughs> oh wait, that was a charisma save. Uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. I think it's 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 the same thing. I'm pretty sure, but if you want to make the the actual charisma roll as a separate one, you can. And heat. Yeah, I think your saving throws get an additional modifier beyond your base stat. Yeah. yeah I think okay. So. Um, I don't. Where did it go? Wait, how do I roll? Um, so you just you just click on where it says charisma. You just you literally click on that. The leftmost oh. column, bottom stat. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Turns out there are other knocks, better ones, but we don't know them. Yeah, so at the door, um, one of the door comes, one of the doors comes open, and uh, one of the masked figures is standing there. Let me go ahead and get that door open for you.
Yeah, everything's running a little bit slow tonight. Okay. Okay, now the, that door is actually open now. You should be able to see in. Uh-huh. And okay. uh, so, yeah, one of these guys uh, is standing there at the door to Sugarcane. Um, he grumbles to himself about what an abysmal knock that was, thinking you might not be able to hear him under the, the mask. Um, um, okay. And then it kind of gruffly says, yes, what is it that you want? That's a really good question. <laughs> um, Possibly something you should have thought through before just now. You know, I caved to peer pressure, so it's really everyone else's fault. <laughs> no. Tell um, them you want some wine. We have money. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, do you guys uh, have any, um, any, any goods to sell? We heard you were the best with wine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with wine we have we have this book that we think you'll really like <laughs> and we'd love to we'd love to socialize okay yeah. do a go check. ahead and make uh yeah go ahead and make a um a persuasion check oh no i okay. think that's the proper <laughs> thing i keep switching systems so yeah let's make a persuasion check okay Oh, yeah. All right, so so he looks back at you, and, he, and that's not a natural twenty, by the way. So that's not a uh, that, that's it's a little different than uh, you I don't got a twenty that's though. That's a, that is a good result on the check. He looks at you and he says, "Well, ordinarily we only sell our wine in town, but." Um, I can go get you some if you'll wait here. Oh, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. How much do I owe you? Uh, that'll be uh, three gold pieces. Oh, perfect. I have that. All right. So so the, the monk that you just spoke to turns around and he walks out of the room. Yeah, roll 20 is like super slow tonight. I, I'm sure it's just server load. Um, he walks out of the room, leaving the other one there uh, who just kind of stands there uh, looking at you awkwardly as you wait in the door. Okay, I want to I want to turn to him and 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 make some more chit chat. Uh, could I make a religion role and ask him about their faith? Why can't you just ask them? <laughs> but I want to do a religion role because I have I have good stats on religion. What? Okay, I'll just ask him. She went to school for religion, okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, you can make a you can make a religion role. But well, uh, you, no, you can just uh, ask him about his religion if you want to. But we, okay. We'll make a religion role if uh, you need to decipher some of the things that he has to say. Okay. Cool. So I want to. I wanna... I'm gonna turn to the guy and I'm gonna say, "So, uh, what what kind of what what kind of faith do you practice?" Uh, we practice uh, silence here. Uh, he says, um, "We are monks that honor uh, the power and uh, awesomeness of the earth." Great. Sounds very good. I like trees, personally. Well, he says, when you think about it, a tree could not exist unless there was earth to plant it in. Good, good point. Good point. All right. So about now, the the other monk comes back. He's got a nice big jug of wine. And uh, he comes to the door and he hands it to Sugarcane. And it says, that'll be three gold, please. Okay, I just, I hand it to him, no problem. All right, so be sure and take three gold off your character sheet. Yes. And uh, then he says, all right, and now I bid you good day. Hey, and uh, okay. he closes the door very abruptly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
I turn back around uh, and say, all right, we got the wine. Let's go. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So what next? I, I have I, to put the wine. I mean, where are we gonna? What are we gonna do with this wine? I'd be irresponsible to just leave it here. That's true. All right. Well, let's take our wine, and how about we go look around the east side of the building? Okay. I'll just put the wine in my bag for now. Okay, uh, Glory, you should be uh, able to move your token around if you want to kind of move where you're wanting her to go in, okay. I don't know, 20, 30 foot increments is fine. Okay. Uh, so you're somehow you're measuring distance there. Oh, I see you you mean to measure yeah, yeah. distance. Yeah, every square is five feet. Every one oh, of the okay. large, large ones are 10 feet square. The small ones are five feet square. Okay. You guys gonna come or not? Or well, uh, hold on a second. We're having some wine, but yeah, we'll be right with you. You're doing great. Why are we here again? <laughs> uh, I guess to figure out what these crazy monks are trying to do. That's right. It's pretty harmless. So me. you found three cults. All of them were up to absolutely no good. Um, they were raiding, killing people, kidnapping people. Uh, plus you're suspicious that there's something even more nefarious that's going on underneath these uh, sites. And... So you, you figure it's probably a good idea since you've rooted out three other cults to just go ahead and make it four for four. That was that was the reasoning to come here. But gotcha. again, all of that kind of took place off stage between our last session uh, two years ago and today. Uh, just so I, I did it just so we could kind of get a fresh start here. Yeah. So that was my question. How, how another question. It's been two years since we have played this last. I was in high school the last time we played. Yes, it's been almost two years. Yeah, wow, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, I want to keep moving around the, the edge of the building, just kind of creeping little by little. We're following, but much less carefully. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just move your token uh, a little bit at a time. And... Um, I'll, I'll try to kind of describe what you're seeing when you get to a large new area. Okay. I turn to Kark as we, as we walk. I'm like, so I was learning how to read the other day, and you will not believe what I saw. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, I'm going to try and just peek around this corner and make sure there's nothing there. Sure. Okay, you don't see or notice anybody around that corner. Okay. Even if there was, they see us with their wine. They know that we're friends. Yeah. So, yeah. so now you can kind of see uh, there's a stairway that leads up into the building. Okay. Uh, that's not a main stairway. Looks like maybe it's some kind of a service entrance or something right there. Oh, okay. So, Sugar Cane, what did you read the other day? <laughs> I just kind of trot along behind her. Oh, it was it was riveting. It was uh, the cat jumped over the tree. Are you impressed? Yeah, that's very good. All of those are real words. Okay, I'm gonna climb up the staircase. Is it just a door right there? Okay. Yeah, it's a staircase, then there's a door up at the very top of the staircase. I'm going to look behind and see if my my uh, party members are even close to paying attention. Yeah, yeah. You're you're going up the stairs to do the thing. Mm -hmm. All right. You're doing great. We believe in you. 
and and this path does uh, lead on around the building from here. Um. Hmm. I just want to. I, I just want to tickle the handle a little bit and see if it's unlocked. I don't want to make too much noise, but. Okay. Yeah. Um. These. Um. These. Uh. Yeah. So you put you kind of jiggle the door handle a little bit, and it's definitely uh, locked. Okay. Hmm. What do you guys think? Should we just keep going around the east side? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, we really have to ask ourselves, do we want to murder Hobo it up or try to get some more information to justify the murdering? Let's try and justify. Okay. Well, let's keep moving. Okay, so it's ask questions first, shoot later. That's kind of the, the plan right now. Yeah, I think that's probably good. Yeah. Yeah, we oh. don't want to kill people if we don't have to. Definitely. Because okay. we get experience per, like, progression, not per kill. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, we're good people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that too. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing anything, right? Spoken like a true moral neutral. Yeah. Moral neutral. Hilarious. Well, good is all relative, right? It's true. Sure. We're all the protagonist of our own story. Mm. All right. So, yeah, you you just see right now you're what you're able to see is just a lot more ground kind of uh, around the side of the building. Well, maybe we should just try and get in that side entrance. Try and pick the lock and get in. Can I fly up on the roof? Uh, yeah, you should, but what's, what are your restrictions for flying? Uh, just 25 feet per turn, just my speed. Oh, so, but in terms of how far up you can go, it doesn't, there's no limit that you know of? Uh, uh not like within reason, okay. you know. All right, so sure, yeah. Actually, I run into the Cirrostratus clouds and get struck by lightning, but. <laughs> yeah, so so up on top, uh, so you, if you fly up on top and land, there's it's just kind of a flat uh a flat roof it, it it ascends up a few feet and then there's a flat roof along the top you do notice what looks like some kind of a garden type thing that's open air that's in the very back mm. uh, you could actually go land in that if you wanted to i would love to is there a bath perhaps some fresh water uh no there's neither of those things but i'm gonna move you around into that area now <laughs> Great. So I'm going to take control of your token for a second. Yeah. Normally ominous words, but I'm just excited about the garden. Garden! He said there wasn't a bat. Yeah, roll, roll 20 is super slow. I know I've said that a bazillion times, but... Okay. Okay. I got you into the garden area now. Cool. So uh, what you're seeing here is kind of a stone garden um it's oh. there's doors there, there's stairs that lead up into the monastery uh right here and um then there's a door that looks like it leads out onto the ground level right here 
and then doors that seem to lead somewhere into the monastery right here. You're not quite sure where they go. <clears throat> and then all around you, uh, you can see a lot of uh, stone statues. Uh, the statues look ki kind of weirdly uh, lifelike. Uh, uh a couple of them look like, uh, look like uh, wildlife from the area. A couple of them look like gargoyles. Wow. Amazing what people can do with chisels. Hammers. Do the gargoyles sing? Uh, no, the gargoyles do not sing. Um, is there a creepy guy who's going to sing about you know gypsy women well we'll find out um i i fly back up and kind of signal to them to follow me back kind of around to the side because you said uh this this door kind of leads to the the outside or yes. is it was it only accessible via the roof yeah yes Yeah, that that door um, that door leads to the outside. Okay. Well, yeah, I signal to the party to come on back and check this out. It's really cool. All right, I've got Glory's token moved there now, and I'm going to get sugar canes. It's really this is really kind of a pain the way these tokens move so slowly. Hmm. I wonder if it's the way that you set the map to reveal itself. Uh, yeah, that's a possibility. We, we could just go back to the, that. We could go back to the old school fog of war and see if that works better. All right, so uh, you you would be able to open the. Um, the uh, door from the inside if you want to. Uh, yeah. Somebody who's a lot more brave should probably do that. Uh, you're the only one that's on the inside. Uh, okay, they're on the backside. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's only, you, you can only open it from the inside. It, they won't be able to get in from the outside. Okay, I open it. All right. Uh, so, uh, Glory, make a perception check. She's having some difficulty uh, hearing right now. You're having difficulty hearing anything? I don't think she, I think she got disconnected or something because I can kind of hear her trying to talk in the other room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Lexi does not notice uh, the gargoyle that's directly behind Car uh, Kark that's suddenly come to life and is leaping toward him to warn him. That's okay. You did your best. So. Let's go ahead and roll initiative here. <laughs> Turns out I'm faster than rocks. All right. And we'll need initiative from glory and sugarcane too. Ooh. So you got to, you have to select your token when you roll initiative. Oh, that's no, right. Got, well, Kark, that. Kark did it, but, but, uh, uh, did I? It seems like a. It, yeah, yeah, you yeah, you I selected it. Order. You had your selected. He's not in the turn order. He's in mine. Hmm. Huh. I am not in ours. Okay, hmm. you see the gargoyle and sugarcane and glory, but you don't see Kark in it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, too. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to delete the one that I've got for Kark, and then just go ahead and roll again. Sure. Get token selected. 
<laughs> oh, oh yeah. Right. Well, that didn't work out so well. Um, bum, bum. Okay, so the gargoyle is going to get a free turn here, and he's going to get it to attack Kark from behind with advantage. I deserve this. So here we go. Um, he just comes uh, scampering up from off of the stand that uh, he was standing on a minute ago, uh, just absolutely still. And he is going to uh, slash at you with his claws. Doing three damage. And then he snaps at you with his teeth, doing another three damage. All right. And now we're up to the top of the turnover uh, turn order, so Sugarcane can have a turn, full turn. Okay, I'm going to use this turn to shapeshift. Um... And I don't know. I don't think I have to make a roll to shape shift, do I? Uh, no, you can just uh, pick the form that you want to take. Okay. Hmm. I'm thinking. Uh, sorry, I'm having to familiarize myself with my options. Hmm. I could do a reef shark. That would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are these gargoyles flying? Like, do we know or? Oh, these are gargoyles? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, they were gargoyles. Yeah, you, 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 you kind of missed out while you were off offline. Yeah. Um, but are they are they flying or no? Eh, they made a rock. Let's just assume no. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, then I'm going to shapeshift into a black bear. All right. Nice. Oh boy. Scary little little guys. All right, sugar cane. Form of a black bear. Whoa, something weird's happening to my screen. How's that? It's like it went all gray and all of our my uh, like all the tokens disappeared. Yeah, cuz you made a new token when you shapeshifted. No, right. no, no, but, like, everyone else's token is also gone. Yeah, I... Weird. Because your new token has to be... Yeah, that's better. I'm trying to get used oh, to this man. dynamic lighting here. Oh, yeah, it's back. We're good. Okay. There I am. Yeah. So, so, uh, so you're, you've shifted into a bear, and now you can... I, I'm pretty sure that's a free action, isn't it? Let's look and see. Uh, I think so. Well, that's interesting. I'm not seeing any of your stuff here. That must be a change in the character sheet since two years ago. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. Are the are the, are you are the other two able to see stuff on your sheets? Uh, my my character sheet works. Yeah, mine does too. Okay, good. So this hopefully this is just limited to to her. Yeah, I can see right. my character sheet. I'm just not seeing where it says <laughs> that I can't uh, that whether I can shapeshift for free. Hmm. General options, feats and traits set to simple is what it says. Mm. So. Well. Mm. 
it's funny that it's only it's only affecting your character sheet. It's not affecting anybody else's. Mm. All right, let's do this the old old fashioned way. Are you getting your book? Uh, yeah, and you know what? Rather than just looking it up, we're just going to do it as a free action right now because I'm pretty sure it is. And okay. then yeah. take too long to look it up. So just go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a regular turn with a bear. Okay. Um, am I? How far away is the nearest gargoyle? Uh, let's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty feet. You can get yeah, to it. Okay. Let's see what's my. Okay, yeah, I can I can get within attack range. Yeah, the bear can move forty feet, so it can move. Yeah any dirt you know it can move adjacent to it pretty easily oh. <clears throat> did i move is it happening hmm Okay, well, I'll just move and get in to range of, uh, of the closest gargoyle, I suppose. Or maybe the one that's attacking um, Kark. Yeah, for sure. That's the only one you can reach. You actually can't reach the other one. Oh, okay, cool. Although he has moved a little bit closer. Are, are we supposed to be seeing what's happening right now? Yes. Like the uh, like the gargoyles and cart? Oh, you know what? I think that's, again, that's uh, some things that I have to do differently because that's, that's my fault that you're not seeing that. That's okay. So, oh, okay. Um, so, mm -hmm. like, Maxwell's able to see all of this, but y'all aren't. Yeah. So I'm, but now... Gotcha. Okay. You should be able to see and move into that area. All right, yes. is that better? Yes. Okay, so now go ahead and move into position and do your attack. Okay, sweet. Oh, I think I can only move. Right? No, you can move and attack. No, oh, you get sweet. to do your, every round you get to do your full movement plus an attack, and you can break that up. You can do part of your movement first and then attack and then do part of your movement. Okay. Additionally, if you get something called a free action, you can do that. And if you get something called a bonus action, you can do that. You can do all of those things in one round. Okay. All right, awesome. Uh, well, I'm going to... Um, uh, scrap. I'm now I'm at him, I guess. I, and I have to use all of my movement to get there. Uh, um, so I'm going to claw at him. Okay. So this attack is with advantage because, um, because you've got him surrounded. There's two, it's a two against one type situation, but, uh, the attack is not effective. It doesn't hit him. That's right. All right. I guess pass turn. Cool. Well, Becca, I think you get to bite also. I get to do both? Yeah, because your actions say multi-attack. The bear makes two attacks, one with its bite and one with its claws. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll try Yeah, you've bite. got another attack. How wonderful. Because they're, they're individually not, like, super powerful. That's why you get two of them. Uh, I clicked on it twice. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. We can take the first one. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, so that's definitely a hit. You can go ahead and roll for damage on that. Oh, awesome! With the first one, the sixteen, seventeen. Uh, so we got we did claw, but yeah, it, either one of those hit. Okay. Um. I know only one counts, but either one of those would hit. All right, so you do six damage to it. Sweet. Nice. All 
Alright, I suppose I will pass my turn. Cool. Okay. Alright, so do I have enough movement to get to the gargoyle, right? How much movement do you have? I, think, I mean, I have a lot of movement. Uh, 30. I'm a sheet. 40, actually. Oh, 40. Jeez. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and keep in mind, you can crawl on walls. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff as a monk. Yeah, and you can spend key points to get, like, extra... Yeah. Um, okay. All right, All right. so what are we doing here? I'm just going to smack with the martial arts. It was super effective against the rock. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh you you're you're hitting there. Cool. All right, so eight more damage. And I will, uh, I won't I think, spend any key I think you get two attacks, by the way. I two? look on your sheet to make sure I'm right about that, but I'm pretty sure you get to, to do two attacks per turn. Um. Okay, yeah, I think with martial arts I do. So we'll okay. Probably doesn't hit. That does not hit. Okay, cool. Well, then pass. All right. So um, this gargoyle turns around uh, toward Glory mm. um, because she seems to be the biggest threat at the moment. I don't know how we lost Sugarcane in the turn order here. Something oh, she created a new token. Oh, that's right. Okay. So I'm just going to add add the back in here. Yeah, she was 15. Okay. All right, so now here we go with the gargoyle attack. Uh, so that's uh, three damage against. What? Well, I'm not seeing it. Oh, okay. So he, he attacks with three damage against, and then another three damage, biting and clawing at her. So a total of six damage. He doesn't have to do, like, a, a check? He a did. Roll. He did. It's just, it's it's getting whispered to me. I'll, I'll do it a different way next time where you can see it. <laughs> well, let me, let me make sure. What's your AC? 13. Yeah. Yeah. They both hit for three. Okay, just make sure. Cool. Took six. Mine is also 13, so. All right, so then this this one jumps up uh, behind Sugarcane and is going to attack her twice, and I'll do this the other way this time so you can see it. Actually, it's you can't see that either, can you? Nope. All right, so his his first one misses. I'm going to figure out how to get these where y'all are y'all could see them. Uh, the second one also misses, so he he misses with uh, two attacks against Sugarcane, and then that gets us to Kark's turn. Cool. All right, uh, I'd like to use Sacred Flame against the one that's kind of in the middle of all three of us, but. Um... I don't think it does AOE damage. I think it just hits the target. Is that right? Uh, what can you, if you select uh, 
there's a way on your character sheet to uh, put the information on it into chat. Uh, up which to may two, help. Five feet is the description. Yeah, it's not going to be AOE unless it says it's a AOE. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll uh, I'll sacred flame the the northern gargoyle. Um, so I think the gargoyle has to make a dexterity save. Okay, so the gargoyle will make a dexterity save, which I I figure. It's kind of low. Being made of rock and all. But you never so, know. Yeah, it's it's whispering all of these to me right now. The save was an 18, though, which I think he's successful. What's your spell class? Spell uh, class difficulty. I think it's just 15, yeah. Okay, yeah. So 18, he makes, he makes the save, so it's half damage, right? That is correct. All right, so he's going to take four points of damage. And then, uh, can I can I back away without uh, giving him an op attack of opportunity since like other people are engaged with him? Yeah, you can do that. Okay, we're just gonna hide in the corner a little bit. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll heal you. Probably. Okay, past turn. All right, it's Sugar Cane's turn again. Oh, okay, there I am. Great. Uh, okay, so I'm currently surrounded, correct? Yes, you, uh, you've you got a gargoyle behind you and a gargoyle in front of you. Okay, so I'm going to multi-attack the one in front of me. So... Biden. Okay, that's not going to hit. That and then I'll, I'll, I'll claw at him. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> those are pretty much epic fails right there. Yeah, gee. Yeek. That's okay. Uh... <laughs> Alright, well, I can't move away without opening myself up to an attack, right? So it's in my best interest to just stay here. Yeah, and I mean, you know, as a bear, you probably want to stay in the middle of all of it anyway, so. Yeah, that's true. I can I can tank a lot of hits. Like, once I'm out of XP points as a bear, I just turn back into sugarcane, so. Right, once you run out of hit points, you turn back into a bear. Exactly. Yes. No. Nope. Like in Brother Bear. Um Okay, cool. I guess I'll just have to pass turn because I can't attack anymore. Yeah. Okay. That gets us to Glory's turn. Okay. So let's do... My attacks are effective but not exciting. Let's do... <laughs> Ooh. I mean, I'm pretty excited. Thanks for the save. There we go. Okay. And I guess that's a hit. Oh yeah, that's a definite hit. All right, you hit for seven more. Okay, let's do another attack on the same, same old, same old friend of mine. Wow. You're getting some great rolls. Nice. She also has okay. plus six. So yeah, you've got, you've got a plus six uh, attack, and so you've done another 12 points of damage to it. Great. And it's still not dead. All right. Nope. Um, still not dead. Well, I'll go ahead and do pass. <laughs> okay. 
All right, be watching your, looking at your different abilities on your character sheet, like key points and things like that. You can spend and do right, right. unique things, but you may just not want to be ready to do that. You may not yeah, be ready I'm, to do I'm, anything like that yet. Right. All right, <clears throat> Gargoyle's turn. Um, he's, gonna, uh, he's going to strike at uh, Glory again here. And I don't think... I don't think you're going to be able to see this, so my apologies in advance. But let me, okay. let me make sure. There might be something real easy I can do to get well, this to work. Oh, man, look at that. The monster rolled a 37. Looks like you're dead and you failed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see what happens now. Ha ha! There we go. Seven piercing damage. Yeah. It's a 13 AC, right? Yeah. yeah. And three slashing damage. All right, so 10 damage. Oof. All right, and now this other one's going to go after Sugar Cane. What's your, what's your armor class, Sugar Cane? Uh, AC in the with the bear is thirteen, so that misses. That's a miss. Oh, that's a hit though for eight. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a hit. All right, so they're just slugging it out with you here. Yeah. Okay. Now we're down to Kark's turn. Okay, I uh, I cast mass healing word. Let's see. Oh, by the way, did you level up to six? I may uh, not have mentioned that to you. Oh, I'm you still, did? but that's okay. Okay, yeah, you can level to six. I, I thought I mentioned it once before we had the session, and I may not have to you though. If I didn't, I apologize. Oh, you're good. Um. Mm. Uh, to make it up for you, I'm not uh, giving the gargoyles bludgeoning resistance in this battle like I should be. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. Well, I think I uh, I inputted mass healing word, but I didn't. Perhaps did not do it correctly. So, uh, casting time, one bonus action, uh, and then you know, creatures of my choice that I can see within range regain one d four plus four. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you all how to do that. That's that's what you'll put in. Okay. And that will give you the amount of hit points that you get back. And and there's no, you don't have to do anything but just declare that, right? You don't have to pass a roll or anything. Oh, wait. He just, he, he, he was able to do it for you. Okay. Yeah, well, I like looked it up in the spell book and was able to cast it from there, but I heal six. my character sheet at first. So uh, that's, that's going to be each one of them get the 1d4 plus 4? Yeah, bo both of them heal 6. Sweet. Or do I roll for both? I think I just roll once. Okay, let's just do it that way this time. So that's 6 points a piece that you get back. That's a good... Uh, that's an average result from the roll anyway, so. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I will uh, Sacred Flame, the Northern Gargoyle. Yeah, the one you're trying to wear down. Yeah. <sighs> so you make a dex save. Oh, that's not going to pass. 
So wow. that's another 10 points of damage to them. Nice. Yeah. Pass turn. Oh, good God. It's still um, alive. It's still alive. <laughs> uh, but you're, you're starting to make some progress. You're starting to, like, chip, it, chip its horns off. And um, it's lost a couple of fingers now that are lying on the ground. <laughs> so you're making a little bit of progress here. All right, Sugar Cane, you're up. All right. I'm going to mix things up this time. I'm going to do claws and then bite on the one in front of me. So, claws. And I assume that doesn't hit. You're not improving your results. I'm really not. <laughs> I have no control. I'm at the mercy. No, come on. And you know, the really sad thing here is you've got advantage on all these checks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Is that a pass, Becca? No, I don't think it is. The 12. That's not a pass, right? Oh, no, I meant. No, she meant, are you done? Oh, I guess <laughs> I am. Have you finished failing yet? Exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> all right. right. Gloria, it looks like you're having to get all the work done today. I guess so. Check that I'm out. Helping. Kicking ass. But yeah, it's mostly. What even? <laughs> all right. And then again. Yeah, that second one is not going to do it. That's all right. That's all right. That is another seven points of damage. Now it looks like it's in pretty bad shape. Thanks. It's like lost one of its arms. Oh, thank God. Uh, it's just kind of crumbled underneath it there. So, All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, but it is going to take uh, take 